In this episode of Adventures of an Old Sea Dog, I sail to a slice of paradise. Just left the town of Savu Savu, sailing up the way with some friends to a nearby anchorage to spend the day. So nicely tucked up behind my friends over there. That's Moggy. Uh, you may remember her from uh, way back in the French islands. Uh, I could actually see the bottom and I was using the charts, which are not wholly accurate around here, but um, about nine meters of water. Um, no, something's wrong. Maybe go under the boat, see if I can see if anything's wrong down there. Got the cabin sole up, that's the floor to you uh, land lovers. Um, and I'm down here, this is an update to my depth sounder thing, which I'm going to go in some reef, so I need to have this working. I've taken this uh, back, the covering here, and this earth uh, is connected down through here. Um, the hot wire is inside here and the earth is on the outside and it's completely severed so I think that's with the cable working like that so I cut back the uh, the covering with that and <laughs> did that to my finger <laughs> claret everywhere there was there's not much bare wire showing down there to connect uh, the two ends of the earth together so I'm going to try wrapping it in this and actually when I cut my finger and I put duct tape on the end there um, that stuff's brilliant for first aid, I've got to tell you. Because um, I've got a holding it together, man. It was pumping. Anyway, it's okay now. Shadows, shadows, shadows. Moggy, Moggy. Yeah, that's for me. Hang on. That was my friends on Moggy. Uh, Dave and Lynn have invited me around my catamaran for a slap up dinner, which is really nice. Uh, on the boat here, we use radios as telephones, um, and that's kind of cool as well. Meanwhile, back. Uh, I've got to try and get this thing sorted down here uh, since I'm navigating through reefs for the rest of the month I need to have that working all right got the sailing instruments on mm, got some foil around that just as a test all right no still not working oh yes it went to 11 meters then. Come on, baby, look, there she goes. Ah, I would say that's working now. Now it's not. <laughs> if I can make a better connection, we might do it. Okay, so let's try this again. Meanwhile, taking time out to see this boat again. Last time I saw her was in the French Polynesian Islands. This is Moggy, one of the biggest catamarans I have ever seen. You're changing colors. Look at that. Oh, that's just superb. Nice shaddy over there. Yay! <laughs> Dave and Lynn, two of my favorite people. Always sad to say goodbye to good friends. That's the downside of cruising. At last, turn Perkinson off and we're under sail. Uh, it's not ideal, not very much wind. Um, but we're uh, we're heading to a reef that looks a bit like um, a man's private parts. <laughs> I can't say that. Anyway, whatever. Uh, yes, um, my friends have all gone, uh, so I'm out here by myself. They're doing seven and a half knots under engine. Moggy is a huge boat, and she's boof gone, baby. So I've got some laundry drying. I've had a couple of apples for breakfast. And I'm just chilling with the will in now. Can see a little island over there. That's part of the uh, the reef that I, I need to go in. The thing I can't do that some of these other boats can is motor. Um, as you know, I've got an old Perkins engine um, that leaks oil everywhere. So um, the more I run it, the more mess there is. 
and uh, it uses huge amounts of fuel and this is only a small boat the engine is far too big for this boat um, so uh, it's just not practical uh, to run it plus it's old yeah, at the end of the day this is a sailing boat that's what I'm doing I'm sailing got some weird sort of stuff in the water I thought I saw it bubbling up I'm not 100% sure it looks kind of ashen and there is an awful lot of volcanic action in this area I was wondering if I was sailing over a vent or something <laughs> as long as it doesn't blow up now meanwhile down below still haven't fixed the cooker from the last trip but uh, I'm taking care while I do this got some pan fried bread on the go and uh, I'm bubbling up some savory rice and that will do me for my my hippie lunch not bothered about volcanoes savory rice and homemade bread <laughs> that will do that was nice and in the meantime changed my mind about that stuff I think you see that there it looks to be more like um, vegetable matter you know like a weed or something coral broom bloom or something oh there you go look look at that i thought it was ash but um it's clumping together there's a lot of there. a few hours later we've had some good sailing i gotta say just nice and gentle old man stuff made some bread had some food um and now it's getting a little bit more sporty which is good because it's got our speed up but we are heading towards a reef uh, the island that's in front of us is surrounded by a reef and there's a very very narrow entrance that's typical of this area uh, of the world and in particular Fiji so uh, got to time it right to get the sails down make sure the engine's running safely before I attempt to go through hopefully uh, the water will be a little bit calmer on the inside because it's come up a little bit now and I'll work my way around uh, the back side of the island that's where I'm going to drop anchor so uh, got to get the sails down engine started um, and uh, prepare the anchor as well as uh, uh, read the chart and navigate my way in so there's a lot to think about a lot to do typical shaddy she's just turned up wind uh, the boat goes a lot faster when it does that she likes that and she only does it when we're in a confined space and it's dangerous uh, to do so never when it's safe to do so that's this boat for you the, the gap is narrow so I got to make sure that I'm bang on with the um, navigation because if I'm a little bit wrong I have to then motor back to where I should be or the worst case scenario I go crunch that's not good the the hole in the reef is somewhere around about there shaddy keeps wanting to go up there not in shaddy so she's doing it again now there is somebody over there you can just see a couple of boats i had trouble getting the foresail in while I was doing it, I, I went in through the entrance and didn't realize it was in the, entr in the entrance of the reef. So, uh, obviously, <laughs> so like, oh, started the engine and sort of backed my way out of there. But it was plenty deep enough, I needn't have worried. I was on course for it and it was okay. Hopefully in time for sundowners on the beach. The sun's coming down. And there's a beach over there. And there's cold beer in the fridge. Still a lot of wind in this bit. It's just dying out now. This we're in the shelter of the, the island just coming up, but it's more than I expected. Actually, there's quite a bit of wind this evening. Supposed to be not much. That's why I stopped my journey here. I could have continued overnight down to the next island, but anyway, I stopped here. It's not, it's not quite what I wanted, but it'll do. Uh, he's got the best spot back there. He's anchored somewhere over there, so I couldn't get in there. It's, it's deep here, and then it's very shallow there. So I just hope I stay here. There's no wind here, and it's hot.
So it must be beer o'clock. For two and a half years, for two and a half years, I have been dreaming of coming to a tropical beach, walking on the sand and having a cold beer. And here we are. Cheers, paradise found. Yeah, baby! Doing a bit of adventuring into the interior. This is kind of real jungly wungly stuff, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ooh! Are they pawpaws or something up there? Best not take anything. It's not mine, you know? Serious. Yeah, it looked lovely though. Yeah, I'd love to go on. But this is just a flying visit. There's not too much here. There was a um, resort here, but it was destroyed in a um, um, cyclone a few years ago. Beautiful. So I'd spend the night here and then move on. I had to come ashore just to get the light. The light is just beautiful. Just, just look at this. I love the way there are flowers in there. White flowers. Another day, another island and another reef. This one was particularly difficult to get in, so I couldn't really film it. But of course it was a relief to get up to the island. I got around this headland, I saw this. If that wasn't enough, then I saw this. dinner over at uh, my friends on Moggy last night, uh, Dave and Lynn, always good to see them and uh, she's such a great cook. Um, so I really enjoyed that this morning. I've got the good shirt on. Why? Oh, that's because I'm going to go and see the chief of the village. Haven't done this yet really. I haven't been in a small community here uh, until now. Uh, here in Fiji you have to get permission and talk to the, the head person, the chief of the village and make a little offering. Um, I've got some stuff here, it's called kava. It looks like um, it's drugs. This is powdered kava, I couldn't get rid of it. It's basically a root plant which they boil up and make into a narcotic drink. Uh, it's known all throughout the, the, the Polynesian islands um, and this part of the world. Um, I've had it before, it just makes my mouth go a bit numb. I went in there and I went in over there and it's super, super shallow with nasty big sharp bits of coral. Um, they don't seem to maintain their jetty here, so I can't really get to the beach, not without doing damage to the boat and maybe me. So uh, I don't care if it's a custom, I'm not going in there till it's high water. Anybody here anyway, nobody's come out to me. So I went back to the boat to do some household chores and cooking, made some bread which failed dismally. So I had an idea, I'd heard about solar cooking. So I wrapped it up in some foil and stuck it up uh, on top of the boat to see what would happen. Still haven't signed in with the chief yet. Uh, the tide's coming up, but I'm busy. I've actually moved the boat three times. Um, I'm on this side of that guy now. I was actually on the other side, but I looked down just behind the boat about where that is and there were rocks. Yeah, those sneaky uh, uh, bombies are all over the place down here. So I moved further out and we're on big tides at the moment and I was frightened the boat might bottom out. Um, anyway, I got some of my old uh, scoopy gear out in a, not a panic, but an urgency to have, I went over the side. That broke straight away. I wish they wouldn't do these fancy things like that because that's, that's a little piece of plastic that's broken and I'm gonna have to throw the whole mask out because there's no way I'm gonna get a spare one of those anywhere. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. It's one of those days. I'm just going to stop today. All right, second effort to go and get my um, blessing from the chief to be on his island. Uh, couldn't make it ashore last time because there wasn't enough water and they don't have a good jetty. So here we go, try again. Oh, I don't see anybody here. Apparently there's no one at home. That looks like an old church. Wow. Oh, that is something up. That's that's my hand to give you an idea of the size. Turns out I'd stumbled upon a breeding facility for giant clams. It's about sperm and stuff and swimming thing. Oh look, there you go, so it's a sperm. I knew it had something to do with sperm. <laughs> okay, Squeaky, that's uh, attempt number two failure. A little later on, I noticed some activity ashore, namely a fire. I don't know what was going on. I think it was crop burning, but at least there were people there. So I went back, I saw a guy, I did the ceremony, all was good. Then decided to get off and do some exploring. This place was absolutely amazing. Started off by taking Squeaky over to a couple of little islands nearby, and I wasn't disappointed. Wow. Of course, being a seasoned traveller, I had some emergency supplies with me. Managed to take a little swim and cool off. I was on a desert island for all intents and purposes. I could have got stranded here, but I would have been okay because there was food available. Wasn't much. This bite-sized guy was running around. Then there was a few seed pods. I don't know what they're for or what they're from. Then I found this. Um, hey, this is a fishing rod. This island would provide for me. I sat down and took it all in. I was in a very, very special place. I was in a paradise here. Loved it. I love it when I do those big bang endings. Many, many thanks to my wonderful patrons for keeping me afloat. Thank you so much for your support. Real-time updates on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time, take care.